Hello and welcome to a very special collection, the Muckabro Collection here in Norfolk on the east coast of England. Today we're going to take a slightly different look at not one but two tanks, both American and both extensively used by other armies, the M5 Stuart and the M24 Chaffee. Why are we doing these together? Because they demonstrate clearly how fast tank design evolves in wartime conditions. Only just under five years separate these two designs, yet they are worlds apart. They also came into use at a time when the whole notion of light tanks looked as though it was reaching the end of the line. The very first tanks were created to break through strong fortified defences while remaining impervious to enemy fire. They were only ever supposed to travel at the speed of a walking soldier. The problem started once you had broken through the enemy's defences and needed to travel more quickly to exploit the breakthrough and early tanks simply could not move fast enough. This was originally a job of the cavalry, of course, but World War I had shown what a bad idea that was. So what was needed were faster tanks, capable of crossing country quickly while being unaffected by return fire. Having decided you need a light tank, the first law of tank design kicks in. The balance between protection, firepower and mobility. For a long time, increasing mobility meant sacrificing either protection or firepower, or both. So mobile tanks were inevitably lightly armoured and carried a small gun, sometimes even just a machine gun or two. But by 1939, regular tanks were getting more powerful engines and becoming more mobile, and it was also now accepted that tanks would have to fight other tanks. America had been caught on the hop. Not only had they neglected tank development since World War I, they didn't even have any independent armoured formations. But they did have the M2, which had first appeared in 1936, and it was hurriedly updated in 1940 to become the M3. Weighing in at 14 tonnes, the M3 retained the volute spring suspension system of the earlier tank, also the 37mm gun and radial engine. It was rugged, very reliable, but very undergunned and under-armoured. It was first used by the British in North Africa in 1941 as the M3 Stuart. Its crews loved it for its reliability and smooth running, nicknaming it the Honey. It could just about hold its own against some of the early Panzer 3s, but had real problems against later models and Panzer 4s. It had been clear from early on that a totally new light tank would be needed. This would take time, so the M3 just had to carry on. The flat armoured riveted plate gave way to angled welded plates. The engine and transmission were improved. The final version was this, the M5 Stuart, or Stuart 6 in British service. The suspension is still the same as the old M2 and M3, and so is the rather puny 37mm gun and the two or three 30 calibre machine guns. Underneath, however, there is a radical change. The original Continental radial engine had gone, replaced by two Cadillac V8s with an automatic transmission. This solution removes several problems. It took up less space, thus making the cramped interior a bit more spacious. And it also delivered more power and was easier to operate. It could drive the tank at 36 km per hour on the road and 18 km per hour cross country. Despite these improvements, turret armour was still only 38mm on the front and 31mm on the sides. While the hull had 28mm on the front and 25mm on the sides all easily penetrated by anything larger than a 15mm shell. The American designed 37mm gun itself had limited armour penetration, just sufficient to take out an early Panzer III, but not much else. The secondary armament consisted of three 30 calibre machine guns, one in the bow, one coaxial with the main gun, and another in the turret roof. Let's now take a look inside. There were two men here in the turret. On the right of the gun was the loader, 
with the gunner, who was also the commander, on the left. Not an ideal solution. Up front, the driver was on the left, and the co-driver on the right. The co-driver looks after the 30 calibre machine gun in the bow. Inside, it's pretty cramped, even with two. And don't forget, of course, that the British version had a three-man crew in the turret. The gunner controlled the traverse and elevation via two hand controls on his left. The telescopic gun sight is directly to his front. The driver has the standard controls of the time. Steering levers are suspended from the hull roof and the transmission lever is on his right. It had been obvious, even from the start, that the M3 and M5 were outdated, even as they arrived on the battlefield. So by 1943, the M5 had been relegated to a scouting role, but it still continued to the end of the war and after. Something a lot better would be needed to replace it. It had been agreed in early 1943 that a completely new light tank was needed, mounting a larger gun than the M5, but still weighing in under 20 tonnes. This ended up very quickly as this, the M24 Chaffee. Looking at the two side by side, you can really see the difference. The M5 looks like what it is, a heavily modified pre-war design. It is high and narrow with old suspension and a small main gun. The M24 looks like a proper tank and altogether more modern. It has torsion bar suspension. It is longer and wider but quite a bit lower to present less of a target, but still weighs about the same. Under the skin is the same double Cadillac V8 powertrain as the M5 it replaced, with a different transmission. Even though the Chaffee weighed four tonnes more than the M5, it could match the earlier tank speed on the road and was about seven kilometres per hour faster cross-country. arrived M24 tank with the 9th Army at Hahn, Germany. Embodying many improvements over its forerunner, the M5, shown on the right, the M24, however, poses problems of identification. Frontline reports indicate difficulty in recognizing this new American vehicle because of its similarity to the German tank. Our M24 employs the torsion bar suspension system. Its all-steel tracks are 16 inches wide, more than 4 inches wider than the M5s. A 75 millimeter gun with concentric recoil mechanism as compared with the M5's 37. Also comparing the shell used by each weapon. Armour thickness was in fact no better than the M5 with 38 millimetres on the turret front and 25 millimetres on the side, while the hull had 25 millimetres on both front and sides. But effective thickness was improved over the earlier tank, thanks to the better sloping and the tank's overall lower profile. The big step up from the M5 is the gun. A 75mm gun firing the same ammunition as the Sherman. But this was a more compact gun than the Sherman's. This had originally been designed for use as an attack variant of the B-25 bomber, making it a better fit for the Chaffee's smaller turret. Not surprisingly, the 75 had superior armour penetration and good high explosive performance. Firing HVAP ammunition, it could easily punch through the front armour of a Panzer IV.
The three-man turret is more spacious than the steward, but there were still complaints about the lack of storage space. Inside the turret, layout is also standard. The commander, where I'm sat at the moment, sits at the back of the turret on the left. In front of him is the gunner, while the loader is across on the other side of the gun. Up front, the driver has simple controls. The two steering levers with red handles, the transmission lever, and the forward reverse selector are on his right. The M24 Chaffee only reached the front line in the closing months of the war, but continued in service right into the early 1950s. They were the first tanks to be fielded by the USA in Korea. They saw action with the French in both Algeria and Vietnam. But there were questions about the future of light tanks as a concept. Already, medium and even main battle tanks could travel as fast with bigger guns and thicker armour. So today, light tanks are still used in most armies as reconnaissance vehicles. Although their weapons are really only to help them get out of tight corners against infantry, not other tanks. <laughs> 